So for years I was a, a like a really fearful flyer until I had the most horrific experience that cured me of my fear forever and I'd like to tell you about it. But first to explain, the origin of my fear comes from the fact that they mess with you before you start even getting on the aeroplane. They start confiscating shit from you that you could never possibly ever hijack an aeroplane with. Shampoo. What? What are you going to wash that plane right out of the air? I once had a pair of nail clippers confiscated from me before I got an aeroplane. How the fuck am I going to hijack a plane with a pair of nail clippers? Wow, I want to cut your nails really far back. It's really sore. I once had a skipping rope confiscated from me before I got the aeroplane. How am I going to hijack an aeroplane with a skipping rope? I'm taking this fucking plane down. I know tricks. Crisscross. Double unders. All I'm saying is I can't live in a world where people are suspicious of shampoo and skipping ropes. Also, okay, I'm just a little bit too sensitive to be suspected of terrorism. Please stop asking me these loaded questions about whether or not I plan on killing people today, okay? Can we all just agree that if I do end up killing someone, it's going to come as a surprise, all right? And flying these days is even worse, because these days you can't even get on the plane in your hazmat suit because all the seats have been taken by a virus with a passport that's more travelled than you are. I prefer the good old days when all you had to worry about was the plane being hijacked by some fascist terrorist like Steve Hofmeyer who's going to crash the plane in Tal Monument as a protest against, I don't know, DSTV and social progress. And the worst is going through security. You have to take off everything, basically, and, and scan it through the x-ray machine individually just in case you're smuggling a bomb in your hard drive or some magic mushrooms in the, in the CD slot. I mean, guys, it's 2020. Can we not invent an x-ray machine that can see through the bag and the computer at the same time? It's just a suggestion. And then you have to hand your boarding pass to the unhappiest woman you have ever seen in your life whose hair has been pulled back too tightly and who hates you just because you can leave. Anyway, I, I get on the plane and then I end up sitting next to the fattest man I have ever seen in my life. And yes, woke people, I know I said fat, okay? But this is not fat shaming. This is more like fat envy. Because when I get fat, people stop putting me in their movies. I go into a casting 5 kgs overweight. My agent phones me and is like, Rob, I have children to feed. Do you know what kind of pressure that is? Being constantly fucking hungry so that my agent's children won't be. So just to be clear, when I call someone fat, I am simply calling out a privilege that has been taken away from me, okay? I do not have a problem with fat people. So anyway, there I was sitting next to Fatty McFatson, this man who is spilling out of his seat like some sort of giant pink custard. I mean, you couldn't sit next to this man without getting to second base. I couldn't tell where his body ended and mine started. It was like sharing a chair with a bean bag that's struggling to regulate insulin. It's like a massive hot water bottle filled with beef and onion soup. I kept finding snacks and socks and change in his crevices. My ear at one point was right up against his, I don't know, his chest or his lats or his ribcage. I can't tell, but what I could do is hear his organs crying for help. Help, help us. We don't know what we're doing here anymore. We're just swimming around in here. I mean, what's the pancreas doing in the sternum? Backstroke, that's what it's doing. You know the kind of guy I'm talking about, right? It's the kind of guy that no matter what the weather, he's always wearing shorts and flip-flops. Like, he'll go to the coldest places in his shorts and flip-flops. Like visiting his racist brother-in-law in wintry England. Shorts and flip-flops. Hiking through the Arctic tundra. Shorts and flip-flops. What's the coldest place on Earth? The frozen food section in Woolies. Shorts and flip-flops. And this day on that plane was no exception. He was sitting there in all his flip-flop feeted glory. And to top it all off, he's got this one big toenail that for some inexplicable reason, he's just decided to let grow. He's like, go boy, you are free now. It's the kind of toenail that's grown over the toe and along the floor. It's like a toenail with its own central nervous system. It's the kind of man who wakes up in the middle of the night with his foot wrapped around the fridge door and food strewn about him. He's like, ah, what happened? The toenail must eat. That's what happened. And to make matters worse, this giant flabby man with this gargantuan toenail is clearly so comfortable with flying that he's already asleep and his enormous meaty head keeps squishing itself all over my tiny terrified face. And at this point, I actually envy him. I do. I envy the man. I mean, the calm of this man. And now I'm starting to hate myself for not having the courage to be more like him. And now the cognitive dissonance is killing me. So I start taking it out on him. I'm like, <laughs> pushing his giant meat buffet of a face back and my fingers are disappearing into the folds of fat. Get your fat face away from me. We take off and now I have to go to the toilet because I literally just shat myself. So I unbuckle myself and squeeze out next to sleeping beefy over here. 
and I go to the toilet. The toilet in an airplane is the great leveler. I don't care how nonchalant you are about flying. But if you go to the toilet and you press the flush button and this noise happens, you shit yourself. Even the captain is like, what the fuck was that? When that noise happens on the airplane, my balls retreat a full 30 centimeters. My balls are like, Polly, 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 what was that, Polly? I don't know, Polly, I heard it too. Polly, I think I shat myself. No, Polly, that wasn't you. Oh, but what was that, Polly? I'm so scared. Okay, calm down, calm down. You know what we should do? We should ask the penis. He was out front. Psst, don't call him that. You know he hates it when you call him that. I'll call him. Hey, hey, prick. Where are you, you cock? I'm trying to get out of the asshole. <laughs> By the way, we did shit ourselves. So after I clean myself up, I return to my seat and sit down next to the giant sleeping man. And as I'm sitting there, trying to calm down, I hear this voice. Hey, hey you. It's coming from next to me. I look, I'm sure the man's sleeping. So I check to see if he's sleeping. <laughs> He's definitely sleeping. So now I'll try to go back to calming myself by reading. And at this instance, it wasn't even one of those shitty magazines. It's, it's the little safety manual. You know the safety manual? The book that tells us what to do when we all die? So I'm sitting there reading through all the various positions in which you can kiss your ass goodbye. And then I hear the voice again. Hey, hey, hey you, down here, down here. It's the toenail. Toenail speaking to me. Yes, it's the bloody toenail, man. What's your bloody problem? I'm th thinking I probably, I probably shouldn't have had those mushrooms before I got on the plane because they were hard enough to get into the CD slot in the first place. And then I went to the toilet and my balls started talking to each other. Shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Listen ya. I'm going to hijack this plane. I'm going to hijack this plane. I'm going to kill everyone on board. I'm going to kill you too. You are pretty aggressive for a toenail, bro. Yeah? Well, you try being attached to this to us your whole life. I'm going to hijack this plane. I'm going to kill everyone on board. Kill you too. Okay, fine. Do it. Do what you got to do. Oh, fine. I will. Well, okay, we'll go. I'm gonna go. We'll go then. Go now. I'm, I'm going. I'm going right. I will go. I'm going. I'm going. Seatbelt. And then this mutant toenail starts dragging this giant sleeping man off of his chair, going, I'm gonna hijack this plane, I'm gonna hijack this plane. The man does not wake up at this point. He's fast asleep, his face is slamming on the chair, being dragged along the aisle as the giant mutant toenail drags this enormous man towards the cockpit of the airplane, going, I'm gonna hijack this plane, I'm gonna hijack this plane. And in that moment, I thought to myself, if only they'd let me bring my nail clippers on board. This could have all been avoided. In the end, the mushrooms wore off and I realized there was no fat man. It was just my own suppressed inner self-loathing manifesting as an outdated form of prejudice fueled by the unrealistic expectations of a cruel society obsessed with physical perfection and the subsequent vicious interplay between shame and rage. It wasn't even a plane. I was actually in the botanical gardens the whole time, naked, swaying precariously in the canopy of a thorn tree. The whole thing did incidentally cure me of my fear of flying, though. And as a footnote, the toenail and I, best friends. Okay, I'm Rob Pimpirin. Pimpirin takes some mushrooms. <laughs>